A U.S. senator recently described a hardship faced by one of his constituents who endured challenges with higher flood insurance premiums while trying to keep a reverse mortgage in good standing. That according to Reverse Mortgage Daily's Chris Clow in Housing Wire. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, recently implemented a new flood insurance pricing methodology, and that was in late 2021. It's called Risk Rating 2.0. Now, the purpose was to price each home individually as opposed to putting them in a flood zone, something that many of you are familiar with. Now, advocates say that that method is more accurate. It uses modern insurance technologies and standards, and it makes more equitable outcomes. But some lawmakers believe that risk rating 2.0 has led to an explosion in flood insurance premiums that are negatively impacting their constituents, especially older ones. That according to Senator Bill Cassidy, a Republican from Louisiana. But because of the new FEMA risk assessment system called risk rating 2.0, there has been an unprecedented spike in insurance premiums, making them unaffordable causing people to drop their coverage. And Cassidy shared another story of a constituent with a reverse mortgage on his home. I've said this before on the Senate floor and we'll say again, someone who has never flooded should not be paying more for their flood insurance than they are for their mortgage. There's a constituent in Montego, Louisiana, who might lose his home altogether because he can't afford to keep it. He's a Korean War veteran. He and his wife are both in their 80s. They took out a reverse mortgage on their house several years ago to help pay medical bills. They live behind a 12-foot levee, but their reverse mortgage requires requires them to carry flood insurance, and that now costs them $6,500 a year. And that's on top of what he's paying for his homeowners. If their flood insurance continues to rise, they will give up their home. But what the senator doesn't mention is that unaffordable insurance premiums are a risk to all homeowners that are carrying a mortgage. If they let a policy lapse and they have a mortgage, the lender can begin foreclosure proceedings at some point. Now, Congress did cap the annual flood insurance premium hikes at 18% for the National Flood Insurance Program, or the NFIP. However, Fannie Mae noted that these increases, pricing changes under risk rating 2.0, could have a tangible impact on consumers. Reverse Mortgage Daily reports that Ginnie Mae is aiming to roll out plans for their new home equity conversion mortgage or HECM mortgage-backed securities product by the end of this year. That according to the acting president, San Valverde. Now, he spoke at the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association's Eastern Regional Meeting, which was held in Washington, D.C. just last week. Now, the news was first reported by Inside Mortgage Finance. Now, Ginny May is developing a policy and implementation plans for the new HMBS instrument, and they plan to roll out a term sheet, which will include a 30-day public comment period, which is expected sometime in June this month. The program's launch is expected by the end of the year, but it could potentially come sooner, Valverde said. RMD did reach out to representatives of Ginny May, but they did not immediately respond for a comment. Normla is pleased to hear that Ginny May will be releasing some of the details around a potential HMBS 2.0 program for public comment, and our HMBS issuer committee is looking forward to reviewing the information once that comment period begins, said Normala President Steve Irwin. This new HMBS product could help prevent liquidity challenges for reverse mortgage lenders. The new program will enable the acquisition of a loan out of an HMBS pool that exceeds the 98% maximum claim amount requirement, that according to Ginny May. Now, when a HECM loan reaches 98% of its maximum claim amount, current rules say that the issuer or investor must buy that loan out of the pool as a stability insuring measure for the broader program. By exploring a new product, which would allow loans with a higher balance to be part of a new securitization, Ginny May is aiming to add more stability to the secondary reverse mortgage market, that following a serious liquidity challenge that we saw throughout 2023. RMD reports the HMBS program has proven to be a challenge for the federal government-owned company ever since Ginny May assumed control of the HMBS portfolio from Reverse Mortgage Funding, or RMF, 
which halted new originations in late 2022 before they ultimately declared bankruptcy and winded down all of their operations. Last year, Ginnie Mae implemented key changes to the HMBS program, which included reducing the minimum size required to create an HMBS pool to help assist smaller issuers, while also changing certain pool eligibility requirements to ease some of the liquidity strains that were seen before. CNN reports that zero down mortgages, those shady loans from the great housing crash of 2008, well, they're back. Older home buyers should avoid them like the plague and quite honestly don't need them. Home affordability has reached historic lows and has pushed many would-be home buyers to the sidelines. So what's the answer for those who are unable to afford the required down payment? Of course, it's a zero down mortgage, right? Says CNN's Allison Morrow. The point is policymakers aren't running out of puzzles to solve when it comes to housing. Perhaps the last thing the market needs is another shady financial product that pushes low-income Americans into homes they can't afford under terms that could bankrupt them. Here's how one zero-down loan program offered by one of the nation's largest wholesale mortgage brokers works. Now, two weeks ago, they rolled out this new program, not new to those of us who do remember zero-down loans, but nevertheless, the program allows a first-time home buyer to secure their purchase with no money down. But here's the catch. You borrow 3% of the home's value, up to $15,000 as an interest-free loan, and pay the other 97% with a traditional mortgage. However, that silent loan will need to be paid back in full all at once when either you sell the home, pay off the mortgage, or refinance. Yet there's another loan that doesn't have to be paid back until one moves, refinances, or sells, and that's a reverse mortgage. And unlike a zero down mortgage, a reverse mortgage doesn't get an older home buyer into a house that they can't afford in the future because no payments are required. They could make payments if the accrual of interest and a growing loan balance are worrisome to them, or they could choose to never make a mortgage payment while they remain in the home. The bottom line is, is that zero down mortgages while appealing on their face often place younger homeowners in great financial peril, risking foreclosure. Older homeowners with adequate cash or home sale proceeds to make a down payment have little use for such a loan, we know that. However, they may benefit by retaining most of the proceeds from the sale of their previous house for financial emergencies or investing, rather than sinking all their cash into the bricks and mortar of a new home. And that is where a Heckam for Purchase is especially useful. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Heckam World Weekly, the nation's only weekly podcast for mortgage professionals. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch these episodes, or if you wish to listen only, you can do that on Spotify, Apple Music, or on Podbean, or at HeckamWorld.com. Thanks again for coming by, and be sure to return next week for more reverse mortgage news on the go.